divide the paper in half. Just give me an idea. Something like that is in a half. So the mouth a little bit, the end of the mouth is a little bit uh, lower than the center. And I would like to keep a little bit on top of the paper. So just add a line here like that. This is the top of the paper. And if I imagine this is the half of my paper, a little bit lower is good for the bottom part of the nose, sorry, mouth here. I'm not adding the details on the body because it's just disappear to the paper. And we do everything by paint, which is so easier to do like that. And then it looks like an arc. If you see, hold this part of the face and head, the head part is look like an arc. So you can draw the arc, but be careful to keep, uh, to keep the white as a left and right side, be visible. Start from somewhere here and from somewhere there. I just keep these two empty parts uh, of the paper. And just draw the arc go and back. I'm doing dark and then I will erase those. So feel free to do your art like that. Even you can make it a little bit longer. Please not do drawing like this, like writing in one dark line. Take your pencil like this from the center or the end part. That helps your hand move easily. You can repeat your line, but if you see it's dark, if I erase it, all this dark line is erased. Yes. And after we have an idea about the whole shape of head like that, I would like to place two ears. The ears is look like a triangle shape, long triangle shape in a simple way, but it's a gentle seeker from top and then gentle seeker from the bottom part. So I, I go to draw a simple line like that and then connect them like this, but it's not really pointy here. So gentle C curve, a little bit make it fat here and then another C curve, bring it down. For the other side as well, one C curve here, try to make it a little long and just nice curve on top, it's not pointy and then move down and you don't need to have very perfect in drawing just we need to place it after we add the paint on top always we can fix the shape add a little bit light or dark color so we can draw the line it gives us an idea where should we place the top of the eyes so draw the line here and here and because of the position it shows that uh, the fox is a little bit looking from down and the forehead is longer a little bit. Because of that, the eyes is placed on the center. So this line is help me for the top of the eyes. And then I would like to place this, this part of the mouth and nose. So if you see here between the two ears, if you move on the, here like this and this, two lines, it's exactly rich, this nice shape that connect to the mouth and nose. So I start from the inside of ears, bring two lines. Please draw very light because we will erase all of them. So this part is good for have an idea about the nose. First of all, I go with that, mouth and nose. Make it nice C curve here on the bottom part. Then nice curve on the top part a little bit. And then it's easy to do one tiny line from the center of the nose and then with nice C curve connect to the both side of the um, of this shape that we draw. So one tiny line. One C curve here and another C curve here that shows uh, his or her mouth. Like that. This is a simple shape of the mouth. And here is finishing off our C curve shape. And I recommend to erase a little bit the line that you draw. 
And the eyes is okay because the eyes is dark. So you don't need to worry about those. I just mentioned about the whole face and body. I just erased those parts more and more to let it be so light. So for those creamy color, I recommend to do with yellow ochre or raw sienna if you have. That's the good creamy color already or yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is good too. It's a yellow that has green inside. And we don't have any white. Actually, we have the white color and the black color in, a, in watercolor, but most of the time the artists don't use them. Because when you use white color to make the color light, um, your color get muddy. So prefer to add more water and uh, to make the color lighter. And if you want to have that color, a specific color darker, please add no water in that, just the uh, paint. As well so if you have orange please add orange on the other part if you don't have any orange you can mix red with yellow any yellow to reach the orange like that this is reddish orange this is burnt sienna it's already reddish brown if you don't have this brown any dark brown you have bring any dark brown you have here I have burnt amber. Maybe you have Van Dyke or any other brown you have. Bring it here. Add a touch of red into this brown. You see? Easily change and come look like that reddish brown. No, they are so the same. So any warm gray, any warm brown you have. Bring it here, like mine is burnt amber, as I mentioned. Add a drop of water to make it runny. Then any blue you have. I, I mean the blue mean dark blue, like ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. Bring it mix with the brown. If you have both cobalt and ultramarine, it's better to go with ultramarine. But if you don't have ultramarine blue, you can go with the cobalt. Blue is nice because help your gray color be more grayish bluish, not really dark. You see it's here? It's nice grayish. Start with this yellowy ochre or even raw sienna. If it's less, please add enough water, dilute it, hold the hair off brush into that, take your brush, it's so watery. Just touch the napkin with it to reduce the amount of water very gently. Apply on a paper. It's already watery. And you can use hold the hair of brush to lay down like that. You can do everywhere like this because this is the base. You can do with the whole hair on, with the brush. Or when you are close to the edge, Work with the tip of brush to make like a line, like that. And even with a thick brush like that, you easily can make the line. Gently. And put your small finger on a paper to help your hand move easily like this. Use both. Hold, hold the hair of brush and the tip of brush. Tip is okay for the edge when you are close to the face, to the end of the face like that to make it liney. And hold the hair is okay on the center when you want to cover the um, most of the face. And make sure not to bring this on, on this grayish part. Continue around the eye. Here, move on a little bit lower than that. A little here, and then make this a C curve. Till here, not much more. Then you can move on the other side of the face. The other side of the face a little bit lighter. So just a little gentle line we add. 
even we can add some line a little longer or always napkin helpful if you are not happy with one part just touch the napkin like this then remove you can fix the color when it's wet brush take a little bit orange always try to control it by napkin like that because napkin helpful it can absorb uh, the water that your brush has and then your brush has enough water for move on not much mm -hmm. then on top of the ear you see a little bit orangey as visible then move on to shape more orangey just one brush stroke when the surface is wet, you see it's so soft. This grayish color on top, a little bit come and control the amount of water and make this inside a little darker with the grayish. But if yours is dry, same as here, you see I add here the reddish brown, it was dry and the edge create. So it doesn't matter. Then wet your brush a little bit, control with the a napkin and then touch the edge so that help your edge disappear always i work with the napkin because the watercolor is playing with the amount of water and on the first layer is okay to go with the watery brush stroke but after that, we need to control it. And then the edge of the ear is a little bit dark. I'm going back to the base again. Where is the space? Yellow ochre, make a little bit water into that to make it lighter. Dilute and fold the hair off brush. Just a little bit touch the napkin with that. This is a technique to make the surface you want to work a little bit wet. Very light and smooth and gently, just touch all this left ear. So gently, that helps with the tone, you wet again the ears. So then you can back on this grayish color and bring it on a part that you're interested. Now you see the gray spread so very well. It can spread everywhere. It's not hard edge create. And so nice and gently, you can add a little bit darker tone on top. Just we want to add a bunch of color beside each other. And I do the same. Bunch of color beside each other to make the base. And then on top with this white color, I come and make the little bit fairy hair. And even a little bit with the dark color, I'm going back with the darker brush stroke. But so far, it's okay to keep it like that.
make it wet here. Even I'm not adding on this part, which is um, which I need to be more light. So what we can do to make it wet? I have already this yellowy ochre. Clean the, clean the brush with the water, touch with the napkin, just move on with clean water. Very less, please not add any pressure. Just with the clean water, wet this part of the face like that. And then move on with the orange. I need the orange be here, reddish orange. A little bit here with the tip, I can go with the details a little bit. Just around the eye is more reddish, but not further. Like that, and even here, I'm close to the eye. Just with the whole the hair, I try to make it more warm. A little bit here, I would like to make it warm, just tiny bit. And then the rest should be keep like that. And I need to bring a little bit darker brown, just paint because my brush already wet, so I don't need to add any water. Just paint and you see it move a little dark, that's fine. Bring it close to the eye. Always napkin be in your hand to touch it and make it less water and more pigment so i lose the shape of the eyes so it's okay little back even when it's wet you can add some more brushes stroke on top but when it's dry it's better not to do anything The reason I recommend to go with 100% cotton is because of the technique that we work. Most of the time, it takes really time to get dry. So it gives you more relaxing time to do painting. Less water, we need just the paint, control it. A little bit tone we need to bring with this reddish color here on the left and right side. A little here. A little bit here. Even you can move on top or bottom a little bit more. Control it just like that. Or even the brown color, which is darker, can come and help this two sides disappear into each other. Just working with paint and water back and forth, back and forth, and add a little bit drop of water to reduce, blend it like that, and then bring some darkness, control it with the amount of water. Make sure not on the face, under the face, we need to start here, add the dark gray, or even red, bluey brownie. Just watery we need, add enough water in your brush, lay down, hold the hair up brush, very gently move on like that, it's so watery. If you see that it's not enough, just, just the water, not, not anything, control. And help your stroke come like that. If it's watery, control it. It come like this, fall down. We have different technique to do like this. We can use even the straw, I can show you. If I bring the water, brush a stroke here, keep it like this, a little more water. Turn your painting on the other side a little bit in uh, angle, blow it into the um, straw. You see, randomly something happened like that, which is interesting in the painting. Or you can do it by watery brush stroke. Keep, take a little angle in your painting, 
do like that and help it drop down. It's already when it's watery, it's dropped down like that. These are different techniques that we can use to make the painting more interesting. That's the interesting part. If you get the magic eraser, magic clean foam, that's the foam, like square shape. So it takes on like this. You can make it wet in the water. Squeeze it. It's just a little bit wet. And then very gently try to lift up this paint very gently you you don't need to work a lot on a paper because can damage the paper but you see it get lighter really really help a little magic clean like that remove some paint on a paper and make it so lighter so it's so lovely feeling when you know how to work with the material and make some nice technique like this even you can reduce the uh, the edge get right of the edge like that and make it fade some part make it fade some part no this magic i recommend to have clean napkin on top or, or even a paper doesn't matter a little on the face here because it's spread everywhere then make the Watery brush stroke with any color you like. I can go with this reddish orangish color. I want to have with this and I want to have the gray color, these two. Make a little bunch of paint like that. Watery brush stroke, really helpful. See how much water it has? So then. Take one brush or pencil or anything like that. Add some drop like this. Or even you can do with your hand like this on, on a brush. It's randomly happened to add a lots of nice details come on top. This is a small part. For a small part, we are not using any water. Try to use very less water and more pigment, even control the amount of water. Because if you use watery brush stroke, it's spread everywhere. We, we are going to work with a smaller brush or pointy brush and make sure this drop is a little bit sometimes wet, not touch those. And 
start to shape the eyes, both eyes around like with the darker tone first. Even I am not touching the paper because it's dry. The, it's wet, the other, this uh, tiny circle that I add. So make sure not touch the paper. Thicker line on the top of the eye like that. It's even go a little further. Come inside more. It's look like an arc on top. And then the bottom part, it's nice to see here. Connect these two parts together, but I need to keep this line a little longer and the other line a little longer too. And the pupil is not touched the bottom part. It's a start from the top part and then move to the center like that. I, I keep this part a little lighter and make it a little fat, not really oval, narrow oval like that. Now I move on with reddish brown. Touch the napkin to make it dry. The darkness and the lightness is totally depend on you. If you want to have lighter color on, on the eyes, you can go with lighter tone, like reddish brown. If you go with a darker tone, you can go with just the brown. bring it here just a touch of water not much I just would like to go with heavy paint I don't want to go with watery paint because acrylic is opaque and watercolor is transparent because of that this opaque and heavy paint can sit on top and you can go by just the paint inside the eye and do like this make the shine even a little bit under the wall the eye like that when, or even here, I just pass from the pupil like that. And you see it's so much change. So with a small brush, you can make some details on top. Start from here. Add enough water because, because acrylic is a little thick. So we want to move easily. And we want to make some hair, very hair. It looks like a hair of animal. See with a small brush, you can just come on top and bring it like this you see it's come on top of the dark part even or from here anywhere you like you can add some more brush stroke like that that shows this kind of things let me show you here you see here lots of white color come on top a little bit even you can add some drop of white on top of the face and some like that 
it's not much with the white color, just an, in, an ear is with the white. The rest is colorful. I will show you that as well. But an ear is just the white. Let me add more drop of water, make the what acrylic a little bit more watery because your brush move easily. Like this and bring it on top of the darker tone, close together. Go on back and make it like a fairy hair. Animals hair is like that even. I'm going to do with the gray color and I'm going to work with watery brush stroke because the brush is easily move and make the line. I start with this under the neck first. Just randomly add some line. Even if it's easier to turn the paper from the other way, you can do that. Just try to add randomly some line close together, a little dark. Thank you. 